You might not know this about me, but I'm a huge fan of performance art. Let me show you one of my favorite pieces. Mm, Yoko, she's, she's the best. Just watch this with me. It's, I don't know about you, but you know, it just, it sends shivers down my spine every time I see that. It is so beautiful. But let me show you another great piece of performance art that I just came across and probably also one of my new favorites. Let's check it out. It's an immutable fact of human existence. The sun rises in the east, geese fly south in winter, shrill Mexican children will always be drawn to Xbox Live like a mosquito wow. to a fat chick's ankle, and Star Citizen is still fucking fucked. Jesus. And as much as I reflect, sure, I'm shooting the breaks the prospect of yet another yeah. 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 pummeling, but I must admit, but who the fuck is that? And regular alpha is there even alpha? Oh, beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I am Montoya. A little thing about the internet that a lot of people don't realize is so much of it is simply performance art. Just because you speak about something with passion and you pretend you're angry, a lot of people go, well, he's so passionate about it, it must be true. And it's sad, but that's the way things work. But you know what? Let's take a look at uh, some of the comments in his channel here. And I know... I just made a video saying how when someone attacks Star Citizen, I don't have to do anything about it because the game will just come out and I'll be proven right. I'm going to stick by that. I'm not going to have to do anything. But watch as his own fans rip him apart and correct him with all the fallacies and plain lies he puts out here. They hit him with facts and logic, Ben Shapiro style. <laughs> Let's go. Well, first of all, uh, Sargon of Akkad actually commented there. Uh, very cool. But let's scroll down and see. Now, look, most of the comments here, to be fair, the highest border ones, are people agreeing with him. Fair enough. It's his channel. This is his audience. He's catering to them. That's fine. But let's take a look at some of the guys actually straightening up the story and being right about it. Starting with C. Marek 1989 here. Game runs at 60 FPS, no problem. All right. This is because one of the first problems that uh, Razorfist makes up here is that the game runs like shit. Now, even me, and I'm running uh, a pretty, well, it was a mid-range machine back in the day, but now four years later, it's a pretty low-end machine. I'm running a 970 with 16 gigs of RAM, and I'm getting a solid 45 to 60 frames per second in almost every way in the game. People with better cards are getting much higher frame rates. So saying the game is suffering from FPS problems, you know what, they fixed that with the recent release of object container streaming. Not that I expect people like Razor First or anyone who reads his channel to know these things because they don't care about that. All they care about is that the game is terrible and it's gonna fail. So C. Merrick goes on and he says, no, the game runs fine. But he also brings up the point about the JPEGs that cost $15,000. Now, this is the argument that the haters keep on putting over and over and over again. For some reason, I don't know what country these guys live in, but let me tell you about America. In America, we have a system called capitalism. Now, what capitalism means, amongst many other things, is some people will make more money than other people. Maybe some people are just born to rich families. Other people work hard and make a lot of money. For some people, spending $15,000 is the same when I spend $15. There are people I know that can sneeze and $100,000 will fall out their pockets because that's, how, that's where they are in life and that's capitalism. So to be complaining that Star Citizen put out a game package for $15,000 and that's a bad thing must mean you probably live in some communist country or you hate capitalism because they wouldn't put it out if there wasn't any market demand. The reason they put out this package for $27,000 or whatever that is, is because people are saying, you know what, I'll buy that. Because they have the money, and they can, because thank you capitalism, God bless the USA. Scrolling down a bit further, Owen, he says, issues with this video. Lumberyard is not a different engine, it's a fork of cry engine. Alright, now raise a fist. Look, 
I don't expect people like Razor Fist and people very critical of the game to actually sit down and read and understand the game the way that backers do. They see it from the outside, they see an article once in a while, they want to get angry, they want to make an angry video to get views, and it, it works. <laughs> so he incorrectly said that changed engines and that's a way to fuck it up, but, <clears throat> excuse me, what the details are, what the facts are, is that they were on CryEngine and they forked off into Lumberyard, which is Amazon's fork of CryEngine. And why do you want to be on Amazon's Lumberyard? Well, for one thing, Amazon Web Services, if ever you want to make a game that's going to be an MMO and you need the servers, Amazon is the company you want doing that. So, CIG, going off CryEngine, going to Lumberyard, is exactly what the game needs to make this game work well. For someone to complain about it, well, I guess the feelings must be hurt because, yeah, have some facts and logic. Let's keep on going down. Hugh Test. Hey, Hugh, are you actually in Test? I love Star Citizen so much around JT killing smugglers. JT is Jump Town. It's one of the new game loops we have to go buy drugs. Libertarians must love that. You can go buy drugs and sell them in the open market. <laughs> I'm a developer though. All right, so here's a, this is good. Here's a guy who is an actual developer or at least claims to be a developer. It's the internet, we don't know. So he understands the timeline and delays. I guess most gamers are used to a game being announced and coming out a year later. Absolutely correct. Games like Red Dead Redemption, games like Cyberpunk, which we're all very excited for, are announced, well, Cyberpunk was recently, a couple of months ago, and will be coming out in a year. I want to dig into that a bit later, but let's keep on saying what he says. Let's read what he says. If I was an investor, I'd definitely not put money into Star Citizen. Oh, okay. Where's he going with this? Because you can make money much easier <laughs> making Unity shovelware and feeding it to 70% of the gamers who are retarded man-children. Q-test. Nicely done. And he's absolutely correct. Battlefield. FIFA. 2016, 17, 18, 19. Call of Duty, whatever it is, all these games are simply reskinning the previous year, putting it out. Everyone's applauding how great the game is for the most part. Here's a company who's making something new from scratch. CIG is starting from nothing. There weren't a studio before. They, were, they had 10 people and they grew and developed something. They had an engine which couldn't handle what they needed to do. They branched off, created a new engine. Most of their time is spent developing the damn engine that is going to run this game. That's what's taking most of the time and money. And people are complaining about it because they'd rather have the same old Unity where the same old Call of Duty, the same old Battlefield over and over again. Ike of Pike, Derek Smart was right. <laughs> Listen, Derek Smart is right. 90 days tops any day now. It's all going to fall apart any day. Archie Duke, people have made better games without a budget. What? This idiot had millions and it's all down the drain with nothing to show. What? <laughs> oh. Oh, the pain. The pain that you can actually go and download the game and play it right now. What do you mean nothing to show? The game's right now. It's playable. Granted, there's only one system, but there's more coming. More game loops are coming. Uh, the, the mining is out now. There's going to be salvage. There's going to be bounty hunting. Bounty hunting is down. To say that it's not there, there's nothing to show off it. Oh, okay. Let's read the responses. Delbert Hunter, thank you. YouTube and Twitch videos of backers playing the live release would beg to differ with your outright lie. Delbert, Archie doesn't care about your facts, all right? He just likes the feeling that he's right. That's what it is. Mr. Fu coming in with more facts and logic saying, can someone explain to me why Star Citizen in Alpha has more gameplay videos on YouTube, more streamers on Twitch, then Elite Dangerous, EVE Online, and No Man's Sky. Naram Sim responding, because it's a train wreck and a cult at the same time. Double whammy! Not only is it a train wreck, it is a cult too. A cult train wreck or train cult wreck, if you will. People are waiting for the cult to implode like a house of dominoes. <laughs> the game disappears into ether forever. The rest of the dominoes will fall like a house of cards. Oh, oh, so painful. The Osteric Zebra asks, how do you get that info? Okay, remember the guy said Star Citizen has more views on YouTube, more, more streamers on Twitch. How do you get that info? 
more streamers and EVE Online based on what data? <laughs> and even the, the number of EVE Online plays very likely exceeds the number of streamers. I wouldn't judge by a metric alone. Oh. <laughs> Zach Hooft calling him out. It's quite easy. I opened up my Twitch app at 3.30p Central Time on January 1st. There are currently 4,220 Twitch streams for Star Citizen, 1,100 for Elite Dangerous, and 188 for EVE Online. <laughs> Joe's got more. Wow, just wow. Take some Xanax. The constant complaints of taking too long. Oh my god, eight years and it'll never come out. Red Dead Redemption took that long and Rockstar is a well-established developer. Joe, Joe's got more. They don't care about your facts, okay? Don't give them the facts and logic. They just want to be angry because the feelings are hurt, all right? But Joe's right here, and that is Red Dead Redemption. They showed us some peaks about a year ago. The game came out, took eight years to develop. How much did it cost? Now, I did try to find out these numbers before I started this video, and there's no actual numbers because they didn't release it, but they are estimating two to 300 million, up to 400 million with the advertising and promotion costs and eight years. Keeping in mind that Rockstar is an established developer. They have offices with desks and computers and artists already there stick in the game here's the project this is what we're doing they made it in eight years star citizen cig no offices no desks no computers to this point taking eight years it's plausible and cyberpunk announced the same time as star citizen who here is crying about cyberpunk taking so long let me hear the crying people about cyberpunk no one's crying about it why why are people screaming and angry about star citizen and not about cyberpunk taking the same amount of time we'll get into that very very soon but he goes on to say so many games come out in four years or less are crap let me remind you a few games recently fallout 76 no man's sky battlefront 1 and 2 battlefield 5 super street the game harry potter hogwarts mystery what never heard about that new gundam breaker sea of thieves need i go on thank you for laying down the logic but no it makes no you're not making a pointer you're not making any point because the same people screaming about Star Citizen taking this long also scream about Fallout 76 being released too early and Sea of Thieves simply being a, a, a rebranded ARC game and will scream about games being released too soon and on the same breath say Star Citizen taking too long. So what is it? What is it? For, what's the magic number for you? Four or five years? The thing is, they don't know. They're not game developers. They're pulling numbers out of their behind. That's all it is. Corbin Dallas, which is a great character I love, but oh, this guy does not... Oh, this is painful. I love when a vaporware game becomes a cult. <laughs> Here's the thing about the whole cult thing. When you've lost the argument and you have no foot to stand on, you resort to name-calling. Ad hominem. You know, attack the person, not the message. So Corbin Dallas here simply attacking can't back up with facts. It's a cult. It's a cult. If you like Star Citizen, it's a cult because I have no logic. That's basically it. Oh, <laughs> and I mentioned here. Yeah? In before Montoya's finesse cry, it's a Kickstarter triple A game, give it time. Crashy J. So you have heard of me. But you have heard of me. <laughs> oh here's a good one the random that random guy just judging by your avatar there i can see that the random guy one is most likely a libertarian a lot of libertarians love hanging around in this channel and if you are a libertarian then you well know that the biggest scam ever conceived is the federal reserve not star citizen get it straight I could go on and on. His comment section is pretty damn long. That's an impressive channel he has there. Now, I do actually watch a lot of his content, but you know, he did need to be called out on what he did yet. And I just want to remind you, this pen is fucking amazing. Look at it. The prices go it right so well. This pen is the last pen you will ever own. It is wonderful. You should get it right now. Amazing pen. Does shouting and screaming really convince you? I want to know. Let me know if that actually does convince you or change your mind of things, if I do shout and scream louder, because maybe I should make my videos like that too. <laughs> but look, we can't dismiss everything Razor First has said. And like a lot of people did in his channel, I said, I agree with you on some, I disagree on others. I agree with him. Hey, 2016, they did say Squadron 42. I went to CisonCon and I said, I can't wait to see what Squadron 42 is gonna be about. I want Squadron 42 right there. I left with a Polaris for $700. How'd that happen? 
<laughs> but listen, we were disappointed. I was very disappointed in Squadron 42 not being released. But if there's a good reason for it, tell us why it's not being released. Well, they changed engines. Well, this happened. Well, they, look, there's reasons for it and there's logical reasons for it. You can be angry or you can take the logic and the reasons for it. Chris Roberts said, no investment money. We don't need investors' money. But now he took $40 million of investors' money. Let's be angry about it. No, listen. I didn't back this game to pay for the advertising budget. I paid for the development. If he wants to bring in $40 million for 10%, he still owns 75% himself. The guys coming for 10% are not the publishers. He is still the publisher. He's holding all the cards. If he wants to bring in $47 million to pay for the promotion and advertising of the game, absolutely go for it. What was the advertising budget for Red Dead Redemption? They're being estimated advertising budget of $200 million, probably the same of what it costs to develop the game itself. I'm happy to bring investors to take care of that part. But we could go on with this for hours. Guys, let's wrap it up. If you enjoyed this content, as always, thumbs up. Drop your comments below. This beautiful test merchandise, link below there. And as always, a big thank you to my Patreon backers listed here. You guys are awesome. Thank you for your ongoing support. I will see you in the next video. You have a good day.